So this is a, we were talking about cross hatching. This is chapter two, part two audio with audio. Cross hatching, <clears throat> this is a woodcut Albrecht Durer um, from the 1500s. It doesn't give us our date on here. Um, so he's creating again white where there is, um, it's hard to explain with a woodcut. Anyway, these places actually are heavily carved out and then he's got some lines carved in um, to show where, you know, there's dark and shadow and so on. So this is an example of cross hatching in a piece of artwork. So lines, if you were talking about lines in this work, you would be uh, talking about the uh, geometric squares here, some organic lines and the hatch lines. Okay, light. Now, light is a confusing uh, element. Sometimes artworks are made of light. Now, that is not what it normally meant up until mm, late 20th century. Um, this piece is from 1971, and there are many artists, actually, that make work out of light. James Terrell is the most famous one, but Dan Flavin is another one. So... Of course, light is the basis for vision, and you know we have a spectrum of colors that come to us uh, from the sun. So we have natural and artificial light. Uh, most art doesn't emit light, but reflects it. Okay, so this piece we're going back to our 2.6. This is reflecting light. You see how that the sculpture has dark and light uh, areas, it has little darker recesses where it's got texture, it's reflecting the light. Um, in 2D, our value rep represents the various levels of light. You want to be careful because mostly when we're talking about light in a work of art, we are talking about a painting or a drawing, and that's it. Because there's a light source, and I'll show that to you in a minute. Uh, but white is our lightest area, Dark black would be the shadow and the heaviest area bunch of eight, you know, mid ranges of grays, a lot of gradations right there. Tone is another word for value. Um, also tint is another word for adding white to color. With your color wheels, you don't add white or black because that is altering the chroma and you don't do that. Okay. So when you do have a, um, not in the color wheel, I beg your pardon. So when you do add uh, black, say here's our true yellow right here and you add a little white and then you add a little more white, you get these tints here. And when you add uh, dark, you know, black, then to straight yellow, you get uh, successively darker shades of yellow. They're calling them shades. They're called uh, tone uh, as well, but that's how you get your value scale in color as well as black and white. When we're thinking about how light is cast from a light source, so, for instance, this is where the sun or light in a room is. Usually this is, for this type of um, exercise, you would have a single light source right here. Okay, so that's where the light would be hitting this area. The highlight would be the strongest point where the light is hitting the object. Okay, so these are shadows over here, um, but they're going to be medium grays, light grays. Until you get into the, the core shadow. Now the core shadow is where uh, the light is not going to be penetrating from this source. The bulk of the circle is blocking the light. So you get this dark, dark here. That's your darkest dark, the core shadow. And the cast shadow in the deepest area in here. Not out here, but down in here. So these two areas are going to be your blackest blacks of the drawing or the painting and then your lights are gonna be here. And then also in this cast shadow, as it comes out, there is some light um, hitting it from other places. The reflected light, in this particular case, this orb, um, it's bouncing off the actual paper and then this orb in a, uh, you know, in set up in a drawing classroom, it's, it's on a piece of paper. That reflected light, that's gonna be lighter than your core shadow. You would think this would be the darkest area, but it isn't. Okay, so when we're looking at the Renaissance works, you really do see a light source. I think you can see it if you just take a moment. So our light source is coming from the top 
right, and it's hitting the knee. So obviously, um, either a window or um, a light is set up for this figure to be hit right here in the knee and um, the thigh and other parts of the body with the straight light out of the window. Then you get into some of the darkest areas because these are the core shadows right in here. I know it seems like it'd be over here, but it isn't. Uh, light starts to bounce off things and then it makes it a little bit lighter over here. There's another shadow that's fairly dark, but there's a range of values here and this is monochromatic. This is just a drawing with a reddish color. Uh, uh, it's a crayon. I can't recall exactly the material. It's not going to tell us. Um, but this is a drawing with just one light source and with uh, darks and lights in a monochromatic um, situation. This is called chiaroscuro, by the way. The chiaroscuro means it's so much sculpting with the dark tones. That's what's giving us our three-dimensionality, is the dark tones, the light, and values. Okay, When you're talking about light in an image, this is what you're talking about. There's no light in a sculpture, really, except when it's made of light, but this is what we're talking about. Okay, so when we look at this, this has um, really one color, and it's a little confusing uh, using this example, I think, but this um, whole piece is made out of one monochromatic color. The recesses, the shadows in there, that is where we get the darker values. So the light is hitting the surface of this, but the light is not going down to these deep recesses. We'd have to have a light, you know, shining on the whole thing right from the front if that were to happen. 